Hello everybody, welcome to a Sunday live stream. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. I uh, just thought I'd come by and quickly say hello. And I have been moving a lot of equipment around, so uh, plugging things in and plugging things out, or unplugging things rather. And so I'm just hoping that all of the parts on my computer, uh, hope they are still working. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say a quick hello to everyone before I head out to dinner, which is uh, in roughly an hour and a half. Um, and yeah, so I just moved all my stuff into my kind of my bedroom here. That's kind of why things look a little bit differently. Uh, maybe I can move the mic a little bit closer. And yeah, let's see. So who's here on a Sunday? Um, so earlier I was working on a little bit of code and uh, then I got distracted and started playing some Tetris for a couple of hours, which is not all that productive. Uh, I was wondering, do you guys ever run into any of these distractions while you're trying to uh, work on a new feature, try to get something like a, a project completed? I always find myself um, only able to work for, I don't know, maybe like an hour. And then after an hour, my mind starts to wander into different places. And uh, whenever that happens, I, I typically find myself watching like a YouTube video or trying to um, buy something online. Uh, lately, I've been looking for things like uh, new camera equipment. So this setup is OK. Uh, it's like a thousand dollars setup. But uh, yeah, doing a little bit of research on like lenses and cameras. And so uh, that's kind of what I've been up to. Uh, who's here? What kind of questions do you guys have for me today? Uh, so we have Anthony, uh, Nicholas, Co Barlow. Um, good to see you again. Uh, I recognize a lot of these names from um, the comments that we get on the, the website. And whenever someone leaves a comment on, I think, the Instagram course and the, uh, the podcast course, uh, I always remember these names whenever they show up in the YouTube channel. So I think Wesley Lee, uh, this name looks very familiar. And yeah, <laughs> there's some questions. Currently learning pagination on the Firebase quite hard. You should make a video on this. Uh, so Alex iOS, uh, I do agree that topic is a little bit hard. Um, it took me a while to come up with the lesson in the Instagram course, uh, which is available down below. I think the lesson is like lesson 39 for pagination. Um, pretty difficult algorithm to come up with. If you are interested in trying to see how I accomplished that feature, then uh, make sure to check out lesson 39 or 38. One of those. Uh, Learning more, it's all about starting the work. Super ADHD developer. Yeah, me too. Uh, Nizam says, do you feel pain on neck while coding? Um, typically, I don't code in a in a awkward position. Um, I've always tried to code sitting in a comfortable position, a comfortable chair. And I've also tried standing up and coding, which gets a little bit tiring, especially on the legs. So I don't experience too much in terms of pain or soreness in my body while I'm just sitting there for long periods of time. Now, however, you can kind of see that I'm not uh, extremely out of shape. Uh, so I think having a, a little bit of exercise every day helps out. Uh, Human feces in San Francisco? Uh, not that I've heard of. Uh, are you currently working as a programmer or is YouTube your full-time job? So I am not working for anyone currently. YouTube, I would consider, yes, my full-time job. I do work this job for more than 40 hours a week. And I've been doing a ton of programming. So uh, it's kind of awesome to be able to build this your own platform and to, to program all the, the features for it. So uh, what have I been working on? Um, the website, I've been looking over a lot of the old, old code that I've had for the website. 
and uh, just fixing up a lot of different areas that need improvement, um, a lot of refactoring. So that's kind of what I've been doing for the last uh, two weeks. Yeah, uh, I find out I find that every time I start to work on the website again, uh, all the old code I have to update, and it takes me a long time to complete the entire process. Um, but yeah, uh, it's something that I do enjoy a lot, though. Uh, when does part five of the chat app come out? So for anyone that is uh, not aware of what the chat app is that uh, Co Barlow is referring to, uh, we have the four episode series so far on how to build out the chat log component series. And uh, I don't actually have the next video recorded yet. Um, I think I'm going to talk about how to use the grouping function for arrays and how to convert it into a quick dictionary. And then after you group it, you want to be able to order it and then have some kind of section header. So that's what I'm going to work on probably tomorrow. I have all the code written out already. Uh, it turns out it's a lot easier to write out code. And then when it comes to the recording process, that for me normally takes an hour to get it all done. And so within that hour, yeah, there's a lot of like preparation, editing, uh, making sure all the equipment is set up properly. So uh, I'll get that done whenever, whenever I have the time tomorrow. I've been just, seems, seems to be really busy just doing a lot of busy work uh, this past week. Uh, only no web tech for type Ionic. Whatever flutter, uh, whatever you want. Uh, so uh, I think I should open all of these live streams with a uh, a, a word of warning. <laughs> Anytime someone asks me a like a question about should I learn X or should I learn Y, uh, you should just learn it. Um, there's really no point in asking someone whether or not you think it's like a good idea. Uh, any technology is good, really. I really don't have anything negative to say about uh, most technologies. Yeah. Uh, any Android news? Uh, Android news. So I really want to push out like a real, like a, an official course for some Android content. That way I can serve the people that are uh, interested in, in Android development. So I've been working on a, like a, uh, kind of an Instagram style app for Android as well. So I guess what that means is when I ha <clears throat> whenever I can sit down, record, and uh, push that content out onto the website, then uh, that stuff will be available. Again, all of this code is just sitting on my computer, and um, I really wish I could uh, kind of increase the, uh, the process or increase the overall speed of things over here. Uh, so let's see, I had a question. So David Kispe says, which framework do you recommend to build my own website? Uh, I don't really have a strong suggestion in mind. Uh, I currently use Golang with all custom code. Um, I would say try to go with Maybe, yeah, what's a good web framework? Uh, if you can get away with WordPress, just use WordPress. And once you need something more custom, mm, you know, maybe try try Node. I would say Node.js is the easiest. Maybe easiest is the wrong word, but to get like, uh, to kind of get going, Node.js seems to me like one of the easiest ways of kind of going about learning how to build out your own framework. And then, you know, maybe Rails is a good idea. You might want to try Python and a Python framework as well. Um, have I tried uh, Swift or Vapor? Yeah, I have Robert Ballista. Um, I can't say that I had a positive experience with Vapor. Uh, it's just because Swift and Xcode is just super slow so trying to write with vapor code is is very frustrating uh, I'm just gonna skip over some of the questions that I think might be a little 
generic uh, which country you belong uh, the best country in the world of course um, hello from Taiwan hello admin Sen Q uh, cool nice well I hope you can get into iOS development uh, as soon as you can um, you know, to kind of think about it, I, I kind of prefer doing web development more than iOS development now. Uh, I find that iOS development is is harder than it needs to be, really. And, like, doing a lot of the coding, you know, whether or not you do your, your development with, like, the storyboard editor or just pure code, it, it feels like it takes a long time to get everything done correctly. And uh, whenever you're working on like a web project, you, you kind of notice that everything is just, you just type out some JavaScript, you save it, and then you refresh your browser. That entire workflow just increases uh, efficiency by, I guess, tenfold or 20-fold. Mm. I always run in why. Uh, I think because I think again, I've been working with iOS for such a long time that doing web development is is a lot of fun for me. Uh, just want to help you are a great teacher. Well, thank you. Uh, do I have any experience with MVV on Swift? If yes, your thoughts about it. Uh, the other day, I, the other day I sent out a email about uh, how to use MVVM and React, and I sent out a project that every a lot of people downloaded the project and. They found it helpful, so uh, it's on the blog. If you go to letsbuildthatapp.com/blog, you'll find that uh, blog post on that project. So head over there. Um, so Tyler P. S. Working with arrays using generics, map reduce. Have you read the Objective C Advanced Swift book? Um, I don't know which book this is. I guess this is the Objective C. Io those guys so they put out really good content um i think in general for me uh yeah i haven't read their book i didn't i didn't i don't i didn't know that they released the book or yeah i guess they did have a, a book a while back uh yeah i highly recommend looking through some of their stuff um yeah learning flutter dart is not so bad uh i agree so one of the bad things about dart is that you have all of this code that's like wrapped in these widgets and uh if you're not careful and if you just like blindly code all the widgets in one space then the formatting and all of this mumble jumble like indentation gets really hard to read um and yeah the only the, the one of the the negatives or one of the cons about developing with Flutter, uh, the Dart language, is that the syntax isn't great. So yeah, whenever like you build out your project, it seems like it makes sense, and then like two weeks from whenever you kind of last look at that code, it's very hard to uh, understand exactly what's going on again. Gabriel finally able to uh, attend one of the live streams. Yeah, welcome. Um, ooh. <laughs> All right, so we have TYA saying, "Lao, quai chu dian fu fei jiao cheng, qian yi jing zhun bei hao le." Ah, wo ke neng, zhi ke neng. 等到下个礼拜才才才把课程写好，然后再录几个几段视频，然后再再发吧。嗯，还有一段时间呢。啊，Let's uh, see. Uh, mark out point. Hello. Uh, so I say you're awesome, Lil. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to do my best to push out as much content as I can on the channel. Mm. Uh, da -da -da -da. 
so, uh, Paul, this is a really good question. I'm going to ignore the uh, the Viper part of this question, but uh, MVVM is a really good framework that you should at least, at the very least, you should learn the principle behind it. And so for those of you that are unaware, MVVM stands for Model View and View Model. Now, one of the hardest parts about, like, one of the more frustrating parts about using MVC is that uh, it starts to become kind of hard to test things uh, inside of your controllers because if you think about it, the controller holds a lot of the logic of your application, right? And uh, if you start to use MVVM, you'll start to notice that all of that controller logic will start to move into this view model class. And if you do it correctly, it's really easy to just uh, write out the test necessary for your view model. And uh, whenever you're running your unit test in Xcode, you don't have to instantiate like a lot of these, these controller files, which you don't really want to do. So it's really hard to describe the entire framework in just a, a quick question right here. And yeah, I plan on releasing something about MVVM very soon. Uh, what is my computer spec? Asked Kevin Cho. Uh, so I'm currently on a like a Hackintosh computer, which um, so what can I say about the Hackintosh computer? Uh, it's built on a lot of like really really fast parts, so uh, I think it's a good computer. It's on like an i7. Uh, i8700 i7 so things are super fast uh, i still have my old laptop here so this is my old laptop that i used to use uh, and so i used to teach at this school uh, called mobile makers and i used this laptop uh, when i went to shanghai the last uh, last time in august I also use this 2013. This is a late 2013 uh, fully specced out MacBook Pro. And, you know, surprisingly, this computer is still very, very usable. Uh, however, because of the heavy demand for recording videos, editing, and sometimes I find Xcode is a little bit slow as well, um, all of these like necessities uh, you know, it's kind of prompted me to build out my own computer. And uh, one of the more frustrating parts about building your own, like, Hackintosh computer is that nothing really works the first couple of times. And even though you have everything set up, it seems like things aren't always perfect. Uh, so uh, I'm probably just going to buy a new uh, MacBook Pro laptop. And also I'll probably spend like the five, $6,000 on the iMac Pro as well. Uh, so that's gonna be like $10,000 just on Mac equipment, which feels like a lot of money. Uh, not totally sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but uh, hopefully that's gonna be a worthwhile investment. Um, so Coral Barley, uh, I use Hackintosh. Yeah, uh, things have been working out so far for the last six months. Uh, the only thing that's not working properly is uh, ever since the release of 10.13.6, the Mac OS, uh, the capture card for what I'm using for my camera right now, it's not uh, capturing 1080p correctly. So I have to kind of um, stop it down to 720p. Uh, it's not that great. You can kind of see it's 720 right now, but that's the only mm, minor knock that I have on the Hackintosh build that I have. So, uh, so Mohammed Khan says, uh, thoughts on data engineering? I think it's a really hot field right now. Uh, if you want to, or if you enjoy statistics and if you like playing around with data instead of doing like a lot of coding and feature building, uh, I definitely recommend going down the path of uh, data engineering. Seems like a really good field in 2018. Uh, yeah, go with the mean stack. It's uh, not bad. 
Uh, Lucy C says, hi, I'm a high school student trying to learn fundamentals of coding to write my first sample app. Uh, any tips, resources you suggest using or reaching out to? Um, yeah, it's, um, uh, it's really, this is a really hard question to answer because I don't know what you're trying to build. Obviously, uh, you have to spend a lot of time just working through the, the features that you're thinking about. Um, I remember the first app that I built probably took like two weeks just to get a like a rough uh, a rough draft of that app. And yeah, uh, your very first project always takes quite the uh, quite the long time. Uh, Robert asks, "What is your favorite uh, programming language?" Um, I would say mm, I don't really have a favorite language to be honest. Uh, I guess I can highlight a couple of languages that I do like. Uh, so right now I find that JavaScript has been really uh, proving itself to be a, a super helpful and super quick, fast language to program in. Uh, it doesn't come with type safety. So that's one, uh, I guess you can kind of consider a con, but uh, because of the lack of type safety, you can code really, really quickly. And so if you know what you're doing, then you can build out some really, really amazing things with a lot of speed. Uh, I use, uh, I've been looking at Google Golang for a, a long, long time. Uh, that programming language as a, like a server uh, backend language is really fast. And I don't think I've programmed in a, a another language that offers such speed and such reliability as Golang and, and the syntax is actually pretty simple to, to follow once you get the hang of it um, and then for mobile I think uh, I, don't, I can't really say that I enjoy programming in Swift all that much uh, seems like I'm typing a, a lot of like weird syntax to, to do some uh, this seems to be a lot of code uh, like whenever you override a method in Swift, you get this massive block of code. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel like you're really programming all that much. Uh, learning how to create a Netflix-like app. Hello from NYC. Cool, hello from San Francisco. Uh, which areas of programming pay the best? Um. I don't know, I find that this question is kind of silly. Uh, like, you're obviously going to go into the areas that you enjoy, right? You're, you're probably not just going to work in the areas that earn you the most money. At least most engineers don't really do that. Um, okay, so Leon Silicon has a question about hash tables and can you simplify how hash functions work? Why are they so effective? Seems like collisions would slow things down. Uh, this is like a an entire week of computer science, I feel like. I remember learning about hash maps and collisions and how to like resize hash maps and how to actually make sure that your values are being stored using the correct keys and stuff like that. So uh, it's a question that you need to spend a lot of time on to discuss. Uh, let me get a drink of water here. Yeah, um, but once you understand how a hash map works or a dictionary in Swift, then you're going to be able to write out much more efficient algorithms. Uh, let's see, I'm an iOS intern and leaders were talking about RE Swift. Uh, I'm not sure what ReSwift is. Could you uh, talk about it and why it's useful? So I know what RxSwift is. I don't know what ReSwift is. Uh, I'd say Google Flutter has the best workflow. Mm, I think we need to give uh, Flutter um, some time to start to prove itself. Uh, it's a really fun language to to build out apps in because Again, you get the hot reload out of the box, which makes development a lot easier. 
and uh yeah uh once you start building out like once you use or get accustomed to having hot re reload available it's really difficult to go back to a system where you can't just hit save and see the changes uh, immediately uh here's a good question so johnny lee asks what are your thoughts on uh, switching companies every one to two years so for me i think i've uh so you probably watched the video on on my work history uh, i i probably switched companies like every every two years and every one year and then i worked at a place for like four years so uh, it's not very uncommon in the silicon valley to be doing this actually so if you're not happy at a place and if you want to work on something new and uh, if you can't kind of work that out with your company your current company then you know there's really nothing wrong with leaving after like a year and a half i would say a year is probably a little fast and uh, you might want to give a place at least a year and a half of your time before you want to uh, take off and leave for another company uh, in the Silicon Valley no one really looks at that as like a red flag anymore it's not like other industries uh, people know that software engineers leave quickly when things aren't like working out you know uh, so I guess I have to reiterate I'll, I'll never I guess I don't really want to a uh, answer questions about react native <laughs> Yeah, 18 months. Um, so design patterns, you'll you'll find a lot of combinations of really good, like different practices from different patterns. So, you know, you know you'll have MVVM, you'll have uh, things like, you'll have a lot of different ideas going into different patterns or applications uh, okay let's see uh, is the Instagram course updated for Firebase's Firestore so I haven't really touched on Firestore a whole lot so I don't really know what to do with Firestore yet because uh, as far as I know Firestore is still in beta mode and whenever Google decides to push that out as an official, like at least a, a release some sometime, then uh, I'll think about uh, shooting some videos for it. Uh, it's really hard to like record videos and have Google like update their their code base, uh, and then having to like having your code break in a video is a lot harder to fix than just uh, updating source code. Yeah, 10K for, so the MacBook Pro that I'm looking for, the laptop version, the, the MacBook, I would say I'll probably buy the one that costs uh, $4,000 or about $3,600. And then the iMac Pro, I think I'll get the, uh, like the $4,500 one. So yeah, I don't know. That sounds really expensive now that I think about it. Mm. Maybe I'll just limit to buying one of the two. I think if I have the laptop, then I don't really need the uh, the desktop computer. Maybe. Hmm. I don't really know yet. Uh, I guess it's always good to have the option of buying both. Uh, yeah. One of the good things about uh, the desktop is that it processes video really quickly. So, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, uh, so I haven't really done AR kit stuff. Uh, I really wanna put out some content on that. I know I say that a lot, but I have some ideas as to like some interesting sample projects that I can build out and teach everyone how to, how to use and once I have that, I, I might put out something more, more on the website. 
practice it. Exercise is greater than coding. Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend exercising for everyone. Uh, Tim says, "How?" Uh, Huan Rong Cao, I I know you will speak Chinese. Uh, I will speak. Uh, keyboard management is always a voted topic when you make some videos about it. Um, I think one of the uh, more useful lessons that I have are, I know I say this a lot, but the Instagram course has a, kind of a lesson on how to manage a little chat area on the bottom with the text input area. So, you know, go check that out if you have the time. Uh, hello, Justin G. Uh, what's I Brian to uh, Fujian? Uh, one Adian Kandal had a sing shi shi shi. Jacob, Jacob, the words on Uh, 还以为是越南的其实我的姓的确是越南的一个姓的一个写法可是我的中文姓就是姓黄的所以还是华人吧就是华侨 Watching a live stream while working on my iOS app Nice, nice uh, nice here, good, thanks. Uh, I think my hair is getting a little bit long. Um, definitely losing a lot of hair as well. Um, I think the YouTube stress has definitely gotten to me. Uh, Tony's has got the biggest interview of my life Wednesday <laughs> advice. Um, interviews are really hard to gauge most of the time. Uh, I know I definitely have gotten a lot of luck. I, I've, I've gotten... A, a, I know in the past I've I've been on like good streaks when it comes to interviews. Uh, I would say success rate for me has been, mm, I think, out of like four interviews, I'd probably get one offer. So twenty five percent success rate, which seems to be okay. Yeah. Um. And the thing about working as an engineer is like the more years of experience you have, the higher your chance of getting hired should be if you're really good. So, um, yeah, the demand for like engineers, especially in the Bay Area, is really high. So that's good for good for us here. Could you share your exact Hackintosh? Uh, I'll tell you the main components right now. So I have the i uh, i7-8700K processor. I have 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, you can buy any type of RAM. It's not really important for your build. Uh, I have a one terabyte SSD, which fills up really, really quickly. I kind of wish I bought a two terabyte drive instead. Uh, video card, I don't know what my brother gave me. I think it's some kind of NVIDIA graphics card. And I believe that's all you need to kind of get things working. Uh, uh, let's see. Hand her a dagger to you for dependency injections, and then MVP pattern. As it's widely, yeah. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand what dependency injection really is, but uh, it's really helpful. Anywhere you go, you'll you'll see this dependency injection pattern. Um, pretty much everywhere in terms of the code base. Uh, Two says same MacBook Pro here. I'm still using it with two 4K monitors. I kind of wish I could show you my setup here. But let's see. Um, I have like I have a monitor. I have a couple of monitors. I have four K monitor, uh, a twenty five sixty by fourteen forty monitor as well. And I don't really even 
put much on that screen. 4K is enough. If I didn't have to record videos, then I would set up two 4K monitors, but uh, I have a lot of recording equipment like right here. And then, um, yeah, I can't, maybe there's some way to stack two 4K monitors right on top of each other. Then I could somehow make use of that, but I would have to tilt my head up and down. That'd be kind of hard. I don't know. I don't know if I would want to do that. Uh, the nice thing is that, like, 4K monitors are rather cheap nowadays, and if you can spend the money and purchase one, then uh, definitely go for it. Uh, Prieto says, building out the chat feature on my startup. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, Caleb says, do I have content on RX with reactive programming coming soon? Yeah. Um, I think I'm finally done with working on a lot of like things on the, the backlog. And next week I'll have, uh, I'll go back to working on Swift projects again. <laughs> 10K. Uh, MacBook Pro, holy grail, yes. Uh, React Native app. So I don't really do React Native, so I can't really say anything too insightful about that framework. Uh, .NET developer learning iOS thanks to your tutorials. Nice, nice. Uh, slow down the live text. I don't really know what that means. Uh, Kevin says that I have a seven-year-old and teaching her how to type. Wonder what language is good for a seven year old. I would say JavaScript because mm, yeah, I think JavaScript would be one of the easier ones to, to teach a, a younger person. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, actually I don't know. I, I really like how sometimes the compiler tells you what you're doing wrong, but sometimes uh, when students are first approaching programming, they find that all these red lines uh, to be a little intimidating. So hopefully you're, you know, you can probably try a couple of different languages and kind of see what uh, your daughter kind of gravitates towards and, you know, make sure she finds it not frustrating and hopefully she finds it fun as well. Uh, hello from you, you, you use Uz Uzbekistan. That's how you pronounce that. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it really depends on how you decide to teach her for programming or what her first feature, what her first couple of exercises are going to be. Uh, yeah. Like if she understands math really well, then you can slowly teach her how to like declare some variables, do some mathematic operations, and then start to introduce functions to her. You know, it's all very, it's all very common for us to think about code in terms of like building something out in the, you know, like a realistic algorithm. But when it comes to someone that's just encountering programming for the first time, it's not all that straightforward. That's what I understand. At least Swift isn't as awful as Objective-C. I agree. Swift is a lot easier than it is. Uh, yeah, Objective-C, there's just too much files, too many brackets, pointers, uh, these ID variables. And, mm. At least it's fast though. When, whenever you go back to like programming in Objective C, you'll realize when you're typing out code, there's the the, the Xcode compiler. It like it's super fast. Uh, Swift is kind of slow. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what Scratch is. Yeah, kids like seeing results quick. Yeah, that, that's you guys make a good point. That's really important. Yeah, maybe.
maybe it'll teach her HTML, more visual. Mm, yeah, you can probably start her off on HTML first, and then whenever she starts to understand how how things are laid out, then you can do something more interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely try not to like scare off the beginners when they're trying to pick up like programming concepts. Uh, it's definitely very like overwhelming sometimes. Uh, kind of tough to find work out of state. Yeah, you know, that's that's really tough. Um, functional programming. Uh, everyone seems to have like a slightly different definition of what functional programming is. Uh, the only true functional programming that I've ever done was in uh, college at UC Berkeley. And we use this dialect of a Lisp called Scheme. And then like everything you write is a function call. So learning how to do that was very enlightening in terms of how to like uh, think about programming in a different way. And you know, you, what you do now is you do this procedural style programming and uh, thinking about how to do things like recursion using uh, functional programming is very, very interesting topic. Uh, what do I think about Kotlin? I, I think Kotlin's a really, uh, it seems to be a really well thought out language. A lot of the features that you commonly use are very accessible. However, when it comes to, sometimes you look at other people's source code in Kotlin, it's very hard to decipher what the language is doing itself because uh, the Kotlin language has a lot of these strange, um, what do you call it? Uh, the syntax is very terse, meaning you type very little to get a lot done. And when you understand a language, that's a really nice thing to have. But if you're just coming into Kotlin, you, you'll find that it's difficult to, to kind of reason about what the syntax is actually doing, which, yeah, that's the hardest thing about uh, Kotlin for me. Uh, what are you working on, Brian? Tell us you have in store for us. Uh, so currently I have like a couple of planned out courses, so I don't know when I'll get those done. And there's just a huge backlog of things that I want to do. Uh, I just find myself constantly working on new things without pushing out the old stuff. So I gotta, uh, <clears throat> I gotta do better on that, I think. Solid principle, uh, pop approach. Yeah, all of this is good. Uh, are you following it at all in your projects? Um, uh, I think everyone is programming using solid, whether or not they call it that. Or at least professionally, we try to use a lot of these solid principles. Uh, uh, programming, like uh, protocol oriented programming is also something that you use kind of by mm, by default in other languages. So it's, it's hard for me to not think about programming in this fashion. Is that I guess what I'm trying to say? Because, uh, and it's also very hard to explain all of this, all these concepts because they're quite abstract. And you have to have a really large project to really understand why you would go about doing things differently. Because MVC is almost always enough uh, for like 90% of the projects out there that are not production. MVC is typically like more than enough for what you want to do. <laughs> would you date a programmer chick or are they too crazy? No, I think a lot of programmers are just normal people. Sometimes they're maybe a little neurotic, I would say, but 
aside from that, uh, you know, those normal people. Uh, UFC, I don't really watch that. Uh, while designing programmatically iOS apps without storyboards, how do we manage uh, different devices, layout like font and scaling views in bigger screens? So I would recommend uh, looking at size classes. Now, when you're using a storyboard, you, you'll like, it's really easy to start toggling things and play with the different constraints, but um, it's also not too difficult for uh, for programmatic layouts, but yeah, you'll start to see that you'll you'll have a lot of code. Yeah, it ends up being a lot of code. So, um, but yeah, for things like font, you can always use. Um, so the guys at Objective CIO, those guys have a nice strategy about uh, modifying font according to size classes. So the view controller will have access to what kind of device you're on. And so you'll pass that as a size class to your uh, UI labels, text views, and buttons. And so according to that size class, uh, you should uh, you know, style your UI components accordingly. And I find that to be almost enough to, to get you there. modal pop-up animation like Appster. I think the Way Wenderlich guys have a course on that, so you can check that out. Uh, it's possible to change the data structures of your app. Yeah, it's always possible to change your code. Um, yeah, the only thing that's hard is you, you, you're gonna have like some kind of server that holds all of your data, right? So whenever your data needs to change on your server side, then your old apps will probably no longer work with that new data setup. So you have to kind of take into consideration different versions that are out in the wild. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind and try not to break the old versions of your app. Uh, Freemi says, have I seen the crazy rich Asian movie yet? Uh, not yet. Mm, I'm not a, like a super big fan of like Asian movies, but I hear this one's good. <laughs> Simon says, finally caught one of the live streams. Well, good to see you, Simon. Uh, mm, New Zealand, Tim Loy One. Can you teach RX Swift? Yeah, someday. Uh, Mohammed says, how much time a beginner needs to master something, for example, iOS. Uh, have you guys read this really interesting book called um, The 10,000 Hours? Or maybe that's just the concept in the, the book uh, written by Max Gladwell, Malcolm Gladwell. And so 10,000 hours, and what is that, like a couple of years, five years? Um, yeah. You need to spend like five years. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So we have Kirk Washington with a $1.99 donation. Tab bar with six tabs and not have the more tab. Uh. Yeah, if you need a tab bar with six tabs, which is something that I, Apple does not recommend if you look at their guidelines, right? Uh, they recommend at most five tabs. And uh, if you want to build a six tab tab bar, I would just build out your own like tab bar component. Uh, you have to get things down like up and down state and modifying the main view port on the main container for your view controllers and then you just have to swap them out manually. I think it's a fun exercise for you to try out. And um, yeah, I would say, I would just say, build out your own manual tab bar. It's, it's kind of difficult to, 
I would say it's impossible to get this more thing to go away. Courses complete SDK first, then go to programming by ourselves. Uh, you'll find that if you purchase any course on like Udemy that promises to teach you the complete, uh, complete guide to iOS like 10, 11, or 12, uh, you'll probably learn. Mm, you'll probably learn like one percent of iOS development. I would say like one to five percent of like development is. Uh, is inside of the, these courses and the rest of the 95% is uh, you have to really dive deep into a project before you can understand what iOS development really is so it's kind of like saying okay can uh, can like LeBron James or Michael Jordan can he just give me the complete guide to how to play basketball like he does like that's a really strange question to to present to someone like that i think uh so kev charmer says what can we expect from a youtube channel in the near future <sighs> so I, I have some new ideas that i want to try out and uh, no one's really doing this yet because it's kind of difficult and I've been working on the website to make sure that things are in place for me to launch a new feature of this channel and the website. So I want to release, I want to be able to have more, uh, more like a, I won't say interaction, but I want to be able to present exercises to people out there that are watching uh, because the only way to really learn something is to have an exercise and to try to work out that entire project without having someone kind of like teach you exactly how to do it and so i want to have some way to give you guys an exercise and then in the span of like a couple of days or maybe a week I'll present the solution that I can come up with, right? So maybe every week I will have a project and then um, I'll kind of tell you guys what the features are that you have to build out. And then I'll have somewhere on the website where if you want me to look at your project, then you can probably maybe submit some kind of ticket and then uh, because it takes a lot of time to actually do like code review and manually like look at code, uh, if people actually want me to do that, then uh, I can probably set like some kind of fee for manual code review. And for the people that don't care about it, then they won't be interested. But I think one of the best things about working full time as a professional developer is having someone more senior actually review your code and tell you what you're doing wrong. So I think that's gonna be a really valuable thing, but I don't know, uh, it's hard to scale something out like that. Um, but yeah, I've been working on a lot of different tools that are now kind of like ready for me to start doing something similar to that. We'll see though. Uh, Meta World Droids is literally listening to your core data course. You are awesome, dude. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I put a lot of time in those courses. And um, yeah, I think the core data one's a really good one. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have enrolled in that course and they've, they've found it to be really helpful. So hopefully you can understand the core concepts and apply it to your own projects. Uh, that's the only true way to, to, to kind of reinforce the knowledge without you forgetting about it later on. 
what do I think about app code? Uh, I've used it for like a couple of days or maybe like half a day. I uh, I wish it was more of a standard because the app code is really quick and you don't get all the bloat that comes with Xcode. Uh, you know, we don't really use the storyboard, so I don't really need all that. And uh, the t yeah, typing out app code Swift is really, really fast. Uh, the autocomplete is super quick. It's also more intelligent than Xcode's autocomplete. You don't have to go through all this craziness just to find the right methods you want to override. Uh, and I think overall you can customize uh, app code Swift to be more fitting to how you like to see your code. And yeah. Um, yeah, uh, app code's great. Uh, it runs the uh, code inside of the simulator just as fast as Xcode. Uh, I've seen your videos about step by step how to be a senior iOS developer. Why don't you do the same for Android? Well, um, so that entire workflow chart that I have for uh, iOS Swift programming, someone else created that. I haven't really found the equivalent Android one yet. If you can leave a comment on one of the videos, I will look at the Android one. I can't really say that I have too much. Um, I don't have a really strong opinion as to like what constitutes a senior uh, Android developer. Uh, can you teach us how to make fragments? Uh, I, I don't find myself using fragments a whole lot unless it's absolutely necessary. And when you have to use it, you just use a fragment manager. It's not too difficult. Yeah. So Meta World Droid, thank you for the $2, uh, $2 donation. And again, I really hope you enjoy the core data course. Um, uh, please teach Kotlin chat app tutorial. Be back, really love your channel. Uh, I don't know if I'll continue that series. There's not really too much to do in that in that app, I don't think. And you should be able to build out most of those features without me guiding you the entire way. Um, yeah, so kind of that, uh, will you be doing more iOS apps with Xcode? Yeah, I think I'll uh, kind of refocus the channel on iOS for the next couple of months. Wow. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. Ba -ba 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 okay, so I have to go. Uh, let's see. What are your guys' thoughts on the new iPhone? Are you guys going to upgrade to the 6.5 inch? Um, I think currently the phone that we, uh, that I'm using right now, which is this guy, this is so powerful. The chip inside of here is so fast and just don't really see myself needing the new 6.5 inch iPhone uh, XS, whatever the heck they're gonna call it. And uh, yeah, it's a really awesome phone. I really like this phone. Um, but yeah, okay, so 6:30. I think I'm gonna go now. And I will check in with everyone probably a couple of weeks from now or maybe some day uh, in the next week, maybe a weekday, I'll, I'll come back online and I'll do a live stream in the morning. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. I will head out and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy your dinner, uh, which is what I'm going to go grab right now.